Ciao. I'm Julia. Julia K. I'm glad you are here. Nobody has visited me in ages. It's been years now. I must tell you my story, but I don't know where to begin. There is so much that... I should start from my childhood, but my memories of these times are vague. I only remember the summer of 1929, when they sent me off to stay with my nanny. Nanny, will you tell me the story of the White Lady? No, Little Sparrow. Not tonight. A fog is coming, see? Yes. I know that when it's foggy, the lady kills young women. But why is she so evil? You see, Julia, pain and suffering can make us do evil things, even if we're not actually bad. Just like soldiers have to kill other soldiers. I like the lady I've decided, Nanny. She must be in so much pain. The poor dear. She still scares me a little, though. Soon I'll be a young woman, and she could kill me. Does she kill those who love her? Of course not. That makes me feel better because I love her. But what about Martha? Would she be in danger? Your sister is with your mother, so do not worry. Do you miss them? No. I mean... Yes, I miss Martha a little, but I love spending time with you. Now, go to sleep, Little Sparrow. It's getting late. Okay, Nanny. I'll go to sleep and dream of the lady. Was she beautiful? She was beautiful. Yes, very much so. Then she'll be beautiful in my dreams. And will I be beautiful just like her? You'll be even more beautiful. Listen, Nanny. Since the lady won't harm me because I love her, and since you're not a young woman, could you tell me her story, even if it's foggy outside? Please. Oh, please. Then I'll sleep. I promise. Oh, all right. You always get your own way. I loved Nanny and I loved that story. Every time I heard it, it sounded like a new and more mesmerizing tale. Every night I would ask her to tell me about it, even though it scared me. Even now I can remember every single day of that time and how happy I was. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. She was expecting a lover's stroll by the lake, gazing out at the old tree growing on the lake's island. So much hope and desire that death, not love, was awaiting her. Oh, the poor dear. That's not fair. Life isn't fair, Poppet, but that's the way it is, and we must learn to deal with it. Okay, I'll try, but it makes me so mad. Keep on reading, Nanny. In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. So he was hanged on the small island, in the middle of the very same lake where he had killed the girl. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, has been imprisoned in the depths of the lake. She grieves eternally for the loss of the man she loved.
When fog arises, the White Lady is known to leave the waters of the lake and roam the woods, looking for her long-lost love in vain. Within the fog of dawn, hunters have claimed to hear the wailing of a woman in the distance. I'm a little scared of this story, even though I like the lady. Should I stop reading, my little sparrow? No, Nanny. Daddy always tells me that fear must be faced. Go ahead. OK, honey. Every time the sad memory of the night she perished stirs in her soul, she takes the life of a young woman by slaying such a life in its youth, even just for an instant. The lady feels free from the burden of her pain. Good night, Nanny. Good night, my love. I spent almost three years with the nanny, but when I came home, I quickly forgot how to be happy. My memories do not return until 15 years later, in 1944, when I stayed in that house. I enjoyed setting up cameras in the woods by the lake. My father created a device that attached to the cameras. It would make them take pictures at set intervals. I was trying to photograph animals, or whatever else was in that damned place. Reel off the film. Open the camera. Remove the old roll of film. Put the new film in. Close the camera. Load the film. Activate the timer. Almost ready. Now to bring the image into focus. There's something floating on the surface of the water. If I frame it better, I might be able to see what it is. <laughs> what? Is that a person? I must help them. at the idea that someone might have drowned in my lake. The lake was my world, where I would spend entire days daydreaming. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible.
I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realize who she was. It was my sister, my twin, a part of me, dead, impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry. Everything is fine. Everything will be fine. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric. Run. My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade, so I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha, forever. who gives life to the dying. Let your sacrifice of love be offered for Martha's soul. Into your hands I also entrust my spirit, so that I may be reunited with her in perpetual light, to never suffer the desolation of purgatory. Please grant her eternal rest, O Lord, and may eternal light shine upon her. Evie, did you remember to light the candles in the hall? People will be here soon. Mummy always finds something for everyone to do. July 17th, 1944. Our family is deeply saddened and is thinking of you during this extremely difficult time. Ernesto E. and family. July 17th, 1944. Our hearts are with you and we share your grief in the wake of the tragic loss of your dearest Julia. July 17th, 1944, Ministry of War. Director General for Conscripts and NCOs. We are grieving over your sudden loss and we send you our heartfelt condolences. The Lieutenant Colonel Rapporteur. An old painting. I find it so sad. It communicates a sense of deep solitude to me. There's no reason to use the phone right now. I 
can't turn it off. We have to listen to the radio all of the time. Any news and announcements can be vital. A telegraph box. I know how to use it. Daddy taught me. Even at a time like this, she can't sit still for a second. Daddy's oboe. We were preparing a really nice duet together. On the rare occasions he's at home, that is. These hunting rifles are not Daddy's. He never went hunting. Nanny must have left them here. This painter was a friend of Grandpa's. I always loved his paintings. As a child, I used to look at them for hours. Coming to get these damn flowers. When mummy asks for something, there's no escaping it. Books, books, and more books. In our villa, there must be ten times more than even here. Mummy and daddy. They are the epitome of wealth and elegance but pain pays no heed to money and style. The only way people could tell Martha and me apart was by dressing differently. Even mother couldn't tell us apart. Daddy's canes. They are so beautiful, but I can't say why, but they have always scared me. My dog's basket, or should I say, the new dog's basket. I don't remember what happened to my first dog, but when I think of him, I feel despair. I better go or she'll end up getting seriously angry. I don't need that right now. Riding bikes around here is beautiful. These are mummy and daddy's bikes though. Mine is outside. Everything always has to be perfect with her. Parla Londra. Trasmettiamo alcuni messaggi speciali. Felice non è felice. È cessata la pioggia. La mia barba è bionda. Parla Londra. Abbiamo trasmesso alcuni messaggi speciali. Who closed the door? Erich, Erich, wake up. 
Do you think it's appropriate to sleep here, of all places? What? Hmm? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. What are they talking about? You can't stay here forever. Why don't you go to bed? No, no. I want to stay with my daughter. Your daughter? Your daughter? You have another daughter, you know. The one who's still alive. Remember? What are you talking about, Irena? Julia is dead. What kind of comment is that? How can you? You should be thinking about Martha. Julia harmed Martha. You know that, right? And as if that were not enough, she has now also abandoned her. It's the same old story. Everything is always Julia's fault, isn't it? Her fault for Marta being deaf and for you being infertile. Do you think it's the right time for this? Julia is dead, Irena. Dead. Someone killed her. Do you realize that? Of course I realize. I get it. Do you think I'm stupid? No one understands it better than me. She always brought problems. Only problems. It would have been better if she hadn't been born at all. You're crazy. I'm the crazy one? Me? They have done this to get at me, yes. Your death is all my fault. All I could ever do for you was hurt you, Julia. My poor, sweet, crazy girl. What will I do without you? What will life be like now? All the time I didn't spend with you. But now I'm home. We can go fishing together. We can take pictures of butterflies. No. We can't do anything together anymore, can we? Nothing. I miss you, Julia. I miss you. While American bombings continue to devastate the peaceful towns within the Elsa Valley, we have heard some tragic news from the area of La Ramula. The young daughter of German Army General Erich K. was murdered near her home. What possible reason could there have been behind such a cowardly act? This is what the Carabinieri, who immediately intervened, hoped to find out. Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha. But not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died. And it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares.
It was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. This is Martha and me at the festival of the patron saint. It was only a few months ago and now... Martha had asked for a picture of me to put in this frame. She wanted me to do one of those expressions of mine that made her laugh. Expressions that she couldn't quite imitate. She used to say that those were the signs of my soul. Can a photo capture the soul? Can I capture Martha's soul? Scary fairy tales. Everything seems to be scary lately. Yet everything here is so beautiful and bright. This is Martha's trinket box. It could contain something that will help to figure out what happened. Even more scary fairy tales. Martha's clothes. To me, wearing them will be like having her with me. Mummy will also be happy to see them. Or I could wear my clothes in the other wardrobe. This dress is only for special occasions. Our beautiful home. In spite of everything, I prefer being here. It's about half past nine. I always keep my trinket box locked. The butterfly collection that Daddy made for me. Nanny will be visiting me soon. My dress. The one Martha wore when she was... I'm already dressed. It's me with the nanny. Or maybe it was Martha. No one can remember.
Here's the whole family together. A very rare thing indeed. Everything I need is always in my bag. Before I leave the room, I should probably take a good look around. Oh gosh, if Mummy sees this picture, she'll throw it away for sure. It's me and Lapo. I want to see him as soon as possible so we can mourn Martha's death together. The key to my trinket box. Here is my diary. July 12th, 1944. This is a new diary. We moved here today and I forgot my old one back at home. But that's okay. A new chapter in my life, a new diary. They say they brought us here for our own safety. Daddy, the war, and everything else. Nanny gave us her house and she went to look after the mansion. It's weird being back here after so many years. I remember Nanny telling me the fairy tale of the Lady of the Lake. It's one of the few happy memories I have from when I was little. Nanny isn't here and that's a shame, but Martha is here with me. I also get to see Lapo more often, which is wonderful. He's always hanging around here. Mum is thankfully too preoccupied with fixing up the house to worry about me. At least for now. July 16th, 1944. There's something creepy about the woods. Every time I'm at the lake, I get a strange feeling. Maybe it's the legend of the white lady playing tricks on me. I get weird ideas. I think that there is this presence. Then I think I'm just being crazy. Anyway, crazy or not, I want to take some pictures. I'm not scared. In fact, I'd say I'm excited. I've made arrangements with Martha. She's coming to the lake with me tomorrow to set up two new cameras with timers and we'll see what we can photograph. Not before a good swim, of course. To be honest, Martha doesn't like photography all that much and recently she's gone off swimming too but she does like spending time with me by teasing me. Then when she gets bored, she disappears into her books and I do my own thing. We feel right when we're together. Yes, Huey, I'll be right there. I'm just going upstairs to call Martha down for breakfast. Fine, but I'm not sure we should let her sleep all day. What do you think? What did you say? Okay, okay, I won't wake her up. I'll, I'll just turn on her light. So when she wakes up, she'll know when to come down for breakfast. They really think I'm Martha and I can't hear them. I need to be careful not to talk or I will be in serious trouble. How wonderful the snow is. Unfortunately, it doesn't snow often around here. Dad loves these prints of Florence. I find them a bit sad. There's no shortage of paintings in our house. Mum is passionate about painting.
As a child, when I spent those short years with the nanny, this was my room. It's locked. Strange. Why did they lock my room? Mummy's family coat of arms. Martha's breakfast is ready. We can go. Yes, yes. It's getting late. Did you leave the newspaper for Martha? You know how much she likes reading it. Yes, Irena. It's on the table, can't you see? And that camera? Are you leaving it there? Yes, Irena. Can't you leave it there for a few more days? Do you mind? It was for Yulia. I will take it away soon. I, I promise. The thought makes me so sad. Seeing it there is as if... I don't know how to explain it. All right, all right, all right. But let's go now. We have too much to do. We can't stay here all day talking. Mummy is right, though. Martha always read everything. It's me who will now read the newspaper instead. They'll be out all day. The funeral preparations will take them a long time. Everything is more complex with the war. Over the next few days, I will see little to nothing of them. These plates are not ours. Nanny left them here. I remember them well. Daddy says that our wine, which is produced here, is extraordinary. I hate wine. I prefer beer. Brutal assassination in San Casciano. Julia Kay, a young woman from a respectable family, brutally murdered near her home. Carabinieri investigates. A possible political motive emerges. Martha was not killed by politics or war. She was killed by something much closer and much less clear. I will find out the truth. Julia Kay. Distressed but supported by faith. Irene E. the mother, Erich the father, and Martha the sister sadly announce Julia's passing. The funeral will take place in La Romola, Thursday, July 20th at 9.30pm, departing from the property of the deceased. Firm bulwark even in the skies. 159 aircraft of the Germanic defence shot down in 24 hours. Major Russian operation northwest of Jassy. Enemy convoy lost in the Mediterranean. Two destroyers and six merchant vessels sunk. These are our vineyards. My father loved them so much that he constantly took photos of them. Bread, butter, jam and coffee. Martha's typical breakfast. I prefer honey and milk, but I'll have to adapt to her tastes, obviously. For Julia, to take more and more photos, Dad. I can verify that the camera is still working by taking a photo. I could photograph a sparrow. There are so many of them out here. Chocolate, a privilege for few people in these times. There might be birds around the little wall in front of the house. I always put crumbs on it for them. I liked watching Nanny as she cooked. I always picked up loads of techniques.
Excellent. I've taken the picture. Now it's straight to the dark room in the cellar to print it. Daddy recently became a general in the German army. He used to take pictures on the front lines, but now he gives me the materials to take photographs instead. Now that Martha is gone, only this camera can fix my ideas and my memories. I can't allow myself to forget. We are so lucky. In these difficult times, pantries are empty and people are going hungry. But with a German general for a father, food is never scarce. These could be of use to me. Mummy's sewing machine. She learnt how to sew because nobody else could do it to her liking. Mummy's medicine. Will they do her any good? Lorenzini haberdashery. Five meters of grey cotton fabric. Six meters of white linen fabric. Four meters of green satin. Delivered on June 5th, 1944. In the event of an issue, contact us on the number 6987. And this red fabric? It's not been mentioned. Could this also be one of Mummy's, or could the nanny have left it here? Our wine. Daddy is so proud of it. Daddy set up his darkroom here. He doesn't take photos anymore because of his work, but photography is still his true passion. I'm allowed to use the darkroom when I want to. Daddy had this device brought here last week. It's old, but still works. He has always loved everything technological. There are three baths when developing photos. The development bath, then the first rinse, and then the fixing bath. The second rinse is done directly in the sink afterwards. Old photographs that father took of this house. Not a bad photograph. 
It seems that the camera works perfectly. Now I can take a self-timed photo for Martha's frame. camera is set up with the self timer. It's always a thrill to develop a photo. You can't see anything at first, yet something invisible is captured on the black film. A kind of ghost. That invisible breath then returns to reveal the reality from which it was torn. There are those who say that photography steals the soul or captures it. That's why they used to photograph the dead. But nowadays, almost nobody does it anymore. Even if it's just a delusion, I want to photograph Martha. I want to have a small reflection of who she was with me, but I have to do it secretly or they'll think I'm crazy. Yes, this is me. No one was ever able to tell us apart. But I never had the slightest doubt, and nor did Martha. It's strange how what identifies us most deeply is not visible to anyone. I was obsessively thinking about Martha and what had happened. But suddenly, a thought took control. The memory of that day at the lake was becoming more and more like a dream when... After awakening, the image becomes more and more faded. Could it be that the memories were a figment of the mind? Had I been the one that hurt my sister? I had always envied her and now I had taken her identity. I experienced a suffocating pattern of thoughts. I decided to go straight to the lake to retrieve the film rolls. They would tell a different story, I was sure. But deep down, I kept hoping they would confirm my fading memory. Of course the door is locked. The keys aren't hanging on the lock as usual, then they will be in Daddy's study. We live in fear now. My parents are not going to let me go to the lake anymore after Martha's death, so this is the right time. I need to know. The self-doubt I feel is eating me up.
It's dark and I can't turn on the lights. It's dangerous. I'll need a flash for the camera. I can look for it amongst Daddy's things in the room below his bedroom. Here's the camera flash. Now I can photograph Martha even in the dark. Daddy's stuff. War maps. I've heard everything will play out on this new defensive line. I have to be careful not to wake them up or they will never let me leave the house. I shouldn't risk it really, but I love watching them sleep. It's the only time they are together and not fighting. I thought I saw... No, no, that's not possible. It must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist. Done. It would be nice to have you always by my side, even if it's just a picture.
With this lens, I can shoot very close up. Orange filter. When there is fog, it improves the image by giving it some contrast. Blue filter. Ideal for indoor photos. A lens and a roll of infrared film. They can photograph what the naked eye cannot see. A photograph is both the present and the past, like a dead body. I don't know what I'm expecting. Maybe it's silly to think you can capture the soul of someone who has died. Her face can no longer tell me if what happened was my fault. I should have known that already. All I can do is head to the lake and get those rolls. <laughs> 